Think you could cope with a cold soul? Here's your look at the Bandai Anime Heroes One Piece Brook. Join the Straw Hat crew in their search for the One Piece with Anime Heroes One Piece 6.5 inch action figures from Bandai Namco. Relive or recreate epic moments from one of the longest running anime titles with over 1,000 episodes and countless adventures to be had. Now then, before we get a closer look and see what's new with Brooke, I'd like to first thank the folks over at Bandai Namco that did provide the sample of the Anime Heroes One Piece Brook that we could have a look in this review. I'm going to grab first the tape measure before we get down to the details of the figure. And starting first with inches, right to the very top of the hat, Brook stands about 7.5 inches in height, or the figure is going to be about 19.5 centimeters tall. As for though the figure's accessories, Brooke comes in clue with his fish guitar. The guitar, I have to admit, is a harder plastic than I was expecting. When I first saw this in the trade, I just assumed it was going to be more of like that rubbery plastic material, but it's not the case at all. While it's a little on the more thinner side, the plastic that they used is actually really good here. The plastic is sort of this mint green, and you've got some additional details added with the fins or scales on the side of the fish. It kind of looks more like a shark. You've got the eye there, you've got the teeth all sharp and fangy. And then from there, of course, extends out the neck that becomes the end of the guitar that he can hold in his hands. With the hands currently in the sockets of his forearms, he ain't going to hold much. However, the figure does include with some swapped out hands also as well. As of right now, the figure does come with closed fists, but what you can easily then do is swap the figure out with hands that are suited for holding. Let's just get the hand camera to focus. Hands suited for holding the neck of the guitar, for example, and another hand for strunging the guitar. One thing I did want to say, though, about the hands, the hands I've noticed work better if you have, say, let's just move the one of the hands, for example, you can see. See how he's got a very large ball joint right here? If you have the ball joint right at the point where it attached to the socket, you get a tighter looking hand or tighter moving hand. The, the moment you actually push it in is where you get a hand that's a lot looser. And I noticed it a lot more than on this side here. If the socket is too far in, the hand just flops around. You kind of have to bring the, the ball joint further out. But even on this side, the hand, this hand at least, for some strange reason, is extremely loose on the figure. Don't worry though, we're going to be swapping those out. Popping then in the strunging hand, which is then on this side. Just make sure the joint's far enough out. And then we'll do again the exact same thing. We'll put in the holding, the guitar holding hand. Again, like this one seems to sit a little bit better than the other one. Although again, the hands are a little on the looser side. What I might just end up doing is take a little bit of nail polish or a little bit of glue, put it on the end of the ball joint just to tighten that up a little bit so that when I put it in, it's going to sit a little tighter than what it is right now. Anyways, though, what you can then do is take yourself the guitar. You might even find it's easier too to do this with the hand and then attach the hand because every time I, I found at least to try to attach the guitar, the hand always seems to then pop out of the ball joint. One thing I do like is that by using the feather boa sort of as an aid, it helps to kind of hold the guitar and then you can have Brook then, well, bringing his arm up as if he's ready to strung it. So kind of like the fact that the bow was there. Not though that the bow was there for specifically to hold the guitar, but ultimately does serve to be a good place to store the guitar, at least hold the guitar, so it's not going to be moving around when he's playing it. Let's for right now remove the guitar. We're going to put it to the side. Overlooking the one issue that I really have with the loose hands, it's a nice looking figure of Brooke. Now this one does have him with the hat, the kind of that crown hat that he wears. The head sculpt is really good on this one. I hope at some point we also get an expression of Brooke where he's got his mouth open also as well. There's a lot of personality considering he doesn't really have a face. He does have the heart glasses, as you can see, a little further up his face. And the detailing done to his face for what little there is of paint is nicely done. He's got the longer kind of afro hair that he, they've molded here in black plastic. And it doesn't seem, again, like there's a whole lot of paint that they've used, other than maybe, again, like the glasses. Probably they may have gone in there and painted up the face. That's my, that's my guess, at least, because I can't imagine that they would have painted the hair. Unless they molded the whole thing in white, gone back to paint the hair, and then while they were at it, and with that little extra bit of black paint, they painted the sockets for the eyes, and they painted the nose also there as well. I like the head sculpt, though. The hat is not removable. It's all built to the base of the head, so you can't. it's all one piece. But it does still give you all the full articulation that would go along with it. One thing I was kind of surprised to see, if I just move his arms out of the way here for a second, second is that his feather boa actually does have articulation. If you look to the side of it, it's actually attached by pegs to what would be then the back of the, bado the boa, as you can see, that's draped across his shoulders. So I kind of like the idea that they did add some art art articulation, trying to get that all out, some articulation there to the top of the boa. 
The boa, in some sense, does have a little bit of looseness to it, especially on this side, but I like the idea, at least, that you can move it out if you wanted to, to get a little bit more interesting of a pose. As for his outfit, his jacket, he does have that long jacket with a frilly colored tie, the fr frilly tie that he has here on the front that's molded, or painted at least nicely here in blue. Some additional details added there also in there in the, in pink. It's not the same pink as what he would have for the glasses. It's kind of closer to me being more of a purple. Then from there, where more of the details start to show is all the flowers that they've painted onto the legs themselves. The legs sort of have an orangish copper color of plastic, but by adding again the flowers, not only does it look like the series, but it does bring some extra additional detail and paint to a figure that looks like he doesn't really have a whole lot of paint to him. One thing I did notice, though, is that the tops of the legs, or I guess most of the legs, really, but you notice it right around here where it attaches to the waist. Clearly, it looks like the waist section is a darker color of orange plastic than what it would be for the legs below it. Uh, under certain lit conditions, it sort of looks like, like right there, for example, I've got a little bit of paint problems. It looks like there's a little line of what's left behind of the paint. But other than maybe like the paint not quite matching, I kind of wish that it could have been a closer color to his lower waist. It's close enough. It doesn't bother me too much. Now, the figure being very spindly like this, he's going to have a harder time to stand. Unfortunately, though, when it comes to Brooke, he doesn't have pickles on the undersides of his feet. What I did sort of cheat at the beginning of this review, I used a little bit of sticky tack to stick it on the undersides of his feet, especially when he's rotating around on a turntable. Getting, a leg, getting spindly legs like this is already a problem, but then having the figure rotating around, unless there was pickles options available on the undersides of his feet, you may just want to be careful when it comes to standing this guy, because again, he's going to be very thin and spindly. For the articulation, when it comes to Brooke, we're going to go back to his head sculpt here. The head is on a ball joint, as already mentioned. The head does move back and forth. The collar of his shirt gets a bit in the way when it comes to rotating his head, but you can still have the head looking that far back and that far forward, and you can rock it back and forth as well. Although sometimes doing it, it does pop it off the ball joint. Maybe what I might end up doing is just remove the head for right now. One detail I certainly also want to show you guys was the fact that the way they sculpted the neck, it looks like a spinal cord. I like that. Anyways, back to putting his head back in place. Suppose we could technically count the fact that the feather boa is also articulated, and it looks to just be not on ball joints, but just pegged in place. So you can hinge them out this way. You can also bring them a little bit closer. They only, they st pretty much stop. I guess you could bring them a little bit for further forward, but they stop sort of parallel to his body. As for his arms, it, the arms seem to be on pin and socket joints. So you can bring the arms out at 90 degrees. Or you can take the arms of Brooke and you can rotate them all the way around. They do get a little hung up and periodically they may pop out of their ball joints as, also as well. The figure I was really surprised to see does have a double hinge on his elbow. And the hands, as loose as they may be, rotate all the way around. Just wish they were a little bit tighter. The upper torso still manages to be a ball joint despite as lean and limber as he may be. Legs do split out. Once again, they seem to be on ball joints. You can take the legs as well and rotate them at the very top. They come forward. They also move back. And again, he does have a double hinge on the knee, which is nice and tight, good to see. And he also has the articulation in the feet, up and down, and you can also rock him back and forth as well. Short of maybe just being the nature of his design, obviously it's going to translate to a very spindly looking figure. Brooke turned out to be a great looking guy. Like I like the designing of Brooke, not only in the One Piece series, but he translates extremely well here to the, to the figure as well. There are obviously a few little problems that I have with the figure. Primarily, it's more so the fact I can't change the fact he's going to be spindly. So when it comes to posing this guy, mileage may vary for how far of a reach or how far in the extreme pose you can get this guy in. But my biggest thing really is stemming from the fact that the sockets that they use for the hands sit too loose, I find, in the sleeves of his, of his wrists. So what I might just end up doing is maybe adding a little bit of glue, or if you have nail polish, if you have nail polish kicking around, probably clear nail polish is the better route to go. Just add a little bit of nail polish to the ends of the ball joints so that the hands sit a little bit better in the sockets of the sleeves. Well, perhaps maybe not the best figure to be rotating on a turntable just to do his spindly frame. Brooke is a fun figure to be putting on the shelf. He's got a lot of articulation, although unfortunately you wouldn't be able to really use a lot of it, especially in his lower legs. He does have the means to at least bend in two points in the knee, and he does have articulation in his ankle, but anything past just having him standing in an A-frame shape like this does cause the figure to balance, have some balancing issues. What I would certainly recommend is if you're looking to put this guy in a rocking out pose, for example, maybe put a little bit of sticky tack, just a little bit, on the undersides of his feet to help prevent the figure from falling over. I did that at the beginning of this review, just before we got into looking at the figure, and against my better wishes, I decided not to use sticky tack here for wrapping up the review. Probably now that I look at, look at it, I probably realized I should have used a little bit of sticky tack as we wrap things up. 
The figure is nicely detailed. Like I said, the figure does have some decent articulation going for him, whether you can use it or not. The only real problems I had with the figure was the fact that his hands, his hands, the way that they're ball jointed, they sit, I feel, too far into his sleeve. And the further the hands go in, the looser they seem to be. I might just try to fix that by adding a little bit of nail polish into the ends of ball joints just to thicken up the joints just a little bit so he holds them a lot better than what he does. Other than that, though, a fun-looking figure. As I already mentioned, though, this guy, as far as I know, is slated to release in July of 2023. So if you guys are interested to get this guy for yourself, he is available as a pre-order as of right now through various online sites. Once again, a big thank you to the folks over at Bandai Namco that did provide this sample of the brand new Anime Heroes One Piece Brook that we got the chance to have a look at in this review. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comments section and as well, if you guys enjoyed this video, I want to hit it with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and on board to certainly see more, Make sure you, if you haven't already done so that you hit that subscribe button down below and you're also turning on the bell notification. I can't believe this guy's still standing. I've now jipped myself by saying this. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.